The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Greg the Barbecue Broker DiGiorgio. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem, New Hampshire. It's the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast, where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other topics that you normally talk around the pit. As always, I'm joined by young Ben. Hello. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Good. How are you? The show feels different today. What's different? We got a fat Greg. <laughs> fat Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Greg, Greg if you're watching, I'm terribly sorry, but <laughs> he's laughing about it right now, I guarantee. I think you've made it up with your Flair Savage 92 WCW shirt. That's what WWF. I'm going for, right? WWF, I'm sorry. That's all right. Excuse me. Well, technically, it was WWF. It's now WWE. Yeah, I know. If we have going to be with it at the politi- time. If we have to be politically correct. <laughs> but no, this is Chris Roulette. Works with me at the post office, and he technically... Is the creator of today's? We'll call him the mastermind. The mastermind Ooh, of the today's mastermind. Talk. I like that. <laughs> we were talking the ugly drum smokers and how they work, and you know how do you build one, and what are they? You know, if you bought one of the manufactured ones, what do they cost? What do they cost? Bill, I'm like, you know something? Hold on. I go. Let me show you a couple of videos. I go. You're familiar with Chef Johnny because we watch Chef Johnny every Saturday mornings throughout the day on his lives. I go, and this is my friend Phil Riddick, Daddy Cooks, and if I'm not mistaken, he was the actually the first ugly drum smoker start to finish ever on YouTube. So I'm sitting around Saturday night going, what the hell am I going to talk about on Tuesday with Greg on vacation? And then it hit me, you dumbass. (laughs) Talk ugly drum smokers. So I called Phil, I called Chef, I called Chris, I go, hey, let's get a little round table, ugly drum smokers, we've never covered them on the show, couple talk, you know, couple quick hits here and there, but we're going straight baseline, ugly drum smokers. So, Chris, welcome. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. You still doing all right? I'm good. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, my two very dear friends joining us. One from the great state of North Carolina, you know him by Daddy Cooks, and if you really go back, you know him by hashtag sneaky, <laughs> Mr. Philip Riddick. That's indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sneaky, I haven't changed. <laughs> All right. And in this corner, hailing out of Lytle, Texas. From a Texas style barbecue and cuisine, the one and only Chef Johnny Stewart. Hey, everybody. Uh, great to be here, and I uh, hope I can spread a little bit of knowledge and some barbecue love with each of y'all today. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. So, everyone doing all right? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm just happy to be here, baby. Atta boy, atta boy. Hey, if it's any better, man, I'd have to hire somebody to help me stand it. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's roll. I want to give you the honor. Go the ahead. Honor. I get the first question. Throw out the first oh, okay. question. Okay. So I'm going to know what made you guys want to build your own um, Uncle Drum Smoker. Wow. Well, I'll go first if I may, Chef Johnny. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> you ever heard the phrase "necessity is the mother of invention"? Oh yeah. Okay. I wanted to. Smoke some pork butts, and I had a regular like two hundred and something dollar grill from Lowe's. All right, it wasn't even a smoker; it was just a grill. All right, and I did a pork butt on it, and I filmed it, and it came out great. But it took me all freaking night because it wasn't airtight. I'm using charcoal with wood chunks, and I had to keep feeding fuel, feeding fuel, feeding fuel. It came out great. The pulled pork was perfect, but. One of my viewers, one of my subscribers on my YouTube channel was like, man, that came out great, but you worked too hard. You should have used a UDS. I was like, all right, man, thanks a lot. Closed it out. Then I was like, the fuck's a UDS? <laughs> what the hell's a UDS? That's so where I was at when I heard of it around myself. An upright drum smoker, or ugly drum smoker. 
And as I looked around, I could only find if you send me $15, I could send you a blueprint. If you send me $25, I could send you my plan. Or I look and see, I didn't invent ugly jump smokers, but all the videos at the time were, here's mine, take a look at it. Or I, I welded this myself, take a look at it. I was like, well, that's not helping me. One, I, I don't know how to weld. Two, it didn't show anything other than the finished product. So out of frustration, I'm like, I'm going to build one of these. And I figured out the parts the way I did it my way. And I just filmed it. I was going to film it. And those of you that watched it, I used the dollar for flair because anybody can do it with a freaking yardstick. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's why I built the thing. I wanted one. I couldn't find information. So if you can't find it, you do it yourself. That's where the video came from. <clears throat> nice. How about you, Chef? I, you know, I was sitting here thinking, but I've had one for a long time, you know, so going back to remember, you know, I guess I had seen some around. And of course, um, I really, I guess we were maybe when I was cooking off and doing some things like that, I like cooking my chicken over fire. And so at a cook off, it was a way for us to put together a really cheap smoker and take, we'd take it with the big pit. I had that big reverse flow, you know, that we were cooking everything else on where we cook our chickens on the ugly drum smoker. And so, uh, man, I built that one. I built some for friends and family and it just, and so really the build you see on mine is uh, one of my early ones. And if you look at the title, it even says something about a rebuild. So yeah. I kind of showed a picture of the crappy burnt down, rusted out that I had, you know, I hadn't cooked in one for a while. Cause I, you know, I, it's not like I have a shortage of pits, right? And so uh, now the wife would tell you I do, but I, I really, you know, I, I, I think I got plenty of fish, but she'll, she'll tell you I got way too many. But anyways, um, I said, hey, let's, I told myself, hey, let's rebuild that and do a video on it. I, I probably already watched uh, uh, Phil's and, and some other ones. And I thought, well, I'll just kind of show how I do it. And so we rebuilt that one and we used all the, I showed, hey, take off all these parts. They'll work on the second one. And see, so that first one cost me about 125 bucks. Well, you know, that second one cost me about 75 bucks, you know, because I didn't have to rebuy everything. All I had to do was buy the barrel, and I think I uh, did a fire. Just a few things, you know, that I had to rebuild, some of the some of the uh, uh, nipples and, and things like that and elbows that were down on the bottom that were rusted together, I replaced those. So I kind of showed how to redo it, and then I did one from a kit. And that video's on there now. So I got two rebuild videos on there. And I got a third one on the way. And some of y'all have seen the picture of that third one. And it is so freaking cool. I gave that to my daughter and son-in-law as a wedding gift. But it is a Star Wars uh, barrel. So some of y'all, uh, you can find a picture of it, of it or I'll send it to you. But it's Star Wars theme. It's got the Rebel Resistance emblem. It's painted like outer space, so it's black. It's got like some space clouds on it. We got stars all over it. And at the top, it's got like a, a Star Wars movie. It says, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, someone was smoking a brisket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that, uh, dude, it, it, that, that came That video's beautiful. on the way. I, I have, I've got all the footage. I just haven't edited it out yet to put it on there. But I think that's going to be a good video also. And that one was also with a kid from... Uh, uh, UDSparts.com. That was beautiful. I saw it. That's yeah, I remember when you, when you had nice texted me the pictures. I hated to give that one away. I thought about <laughs> keeping it. Hey, I, would, hey I, I, I had told you once you said that you know it was a wedding gift for Haley and her husband. I was going, uh, I go, I might have to renew the vows again with Mrs. <laughs> Mags and invite you up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I bring one of those to every wedding I go to. Can you imagine how many weddings I get invited to? <laughs> You'd be invited to my wedding. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. We got a question from Kyle Alexander. Do you do both? You guys still have your first UDSs that you built? I know that. Um, I know Phil does. But how about you, Chef? Yes. Oh no. Uh -uh. No. I, I I know. I might have some elements of it. <laughs> you know, in that one I've got, but no. First one is, is long gone, burnt out, rusted out. And I tell, one of the key things is to tell people is, is now, which I didn't do at first, because, you know, and I, I wouldn't even paint them. I mean, they went out, they were definitely ugly drums. But uh, put, uh, put seed on them. 
or put wheel, a set of wheels or put get them up off the ground yep. because that will do more damage than anything else is. You get them up off the ground and you're going to get a very good longevity. Uh, you get a little uh, a scratch on them where they can rush, clean that off, touch up the paint. And if yep. you do that, those things will last for years and years. But I just didn't take real good care of mine because I'm about I buy another barrel for 25 bucks and rebuild it in an afternoon. <laughs> so that's yeah. what I did. I, I mean, I probably, I don't know, made 10 of them maybe over years, 12. Something I like still that. got mine, um, but it's time for me to do a refurb. I need to do a refurb and I'll, I'll do a video on it. I was told, which is funny out of England. Um, they were like, uh, out of the, uh, barbecue talks, shameless plug, the barbecue talks, um, their channel, uh, I was invited. No, it was the, I think it's UDS UK, Ugly Drum Smokers from UK channel. Mm -hmm. Another shameless plug. Anyway, they were asking people to put up pictures of their UDS so that they can decide which one's going to be the, you know, the, the page picture. As soon as I put it up there, they're like, man, that was iconic. And almost everybody's like, man, I built mine because of that video and this, that, and the other. But my nuds is ugly now, so I need to refurb it. I'm going I'm to take a page from Chef Johnny. I'll shoot a video on a refurb. And I'm going to make it look exactly the same. I, I just don't want to lose that look. And if y'all haven't seen Phil's video, he does a fantastic job of breaking down how to make one. I mean, it, it's it's very good done. And I don't know, man, how many thousands of views do you have on that thing now? I, mean, I got a lot of people almost watching. a half a million. I almost got 500,000 views on that video. Yeah. That video is seven years old. Wow. And I still get, for seven years, I've been getting questions on that video. I get questions all the time. And it, it's it's put together well, and, and it's it's very well descriptive how to get it done. Great, Thank great you, job on that. Yeah, Thank you. I know you even came with up with a parts list in the comments section as well. Yes, yep, that's amazing. It, it looks, I mean, it looks sexy. I'll say that. All right, we got <laughs> want to you know say hi to everyone in the chat. You know, C Mac, Brian Horseman, uh, Pickles, Schmitty, Kyle, Dave Grover. Can someone please time out this Greg DiGiorgio character blowing up my chat? Oh. Matt Osborne, Ryan, uh, Daddy Dutch, Robert Marvin, hello, Claudia, hello, Brother Rick, hello, Jason, what's up? All right. So oh, we would God, say hi to my cousin, Barbara. She's in there. Well, <laughs> well you missed one, huh? I missed one. Barbara. Barbara. This chat has been blasting through. Everyone's saying hello. No, I don't see Barbara on my feed here, Chef. I'm on the I'm on the Facebook page. On Barbara my, Dixon. On mine? With you. On my show well, page? It's because she didn't make a comment. That's probably why. Oh, okay. Barbara, make a comment so he'll <laughs> say something to you. Come on, cousin. <laughs> Hi Barbara. Hi Barbara. Nice to nice to have <laughs> yeah. you. Uh so we were actually looking at um, doing a little research today, comparing the two videos. Now, it's, you know, the same base, but just a few intricacies. You know, Phil, you have the four vent exhaust system on the lid, while Chef, you have the one uh, exhaust. And um, is there a reason behind the two? Is it a personal preference? <clears throat> on the amount of exhaust you have? Yes. The reason I did the four exhaust is because after I drove out, I got my uh, my drum, and it cost me 50 bucks because of my location. I'm sorry to say. I had to drive an hour uh, from Craigslist to get two drums. And after I got them home, I was like, oh, shit. I, this is going to sound so terrible. I have no bunghole. <laughs> 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 I had a drum without a bug hole. So that left me with a dilemma. How do I exhaust? And I sat back and I thought about it. Am I going to get a two inch something and try to, you know, uh, cause I can't weld. Am I going to try to rivet it on? I'm going to lose smoke. You know, what do I do? And, uh, it just came to me. I already got this, uh, uh, step drill bit. I'm already using quarter inch freaking holes at the bottom for the intakes. I just did quarter inch, I'm sorry, three quarter inch holes on the top. And I saw those, those, uh, those, uh, angled freaking pipes at Lowe's and, uh, it worked, it worked. And that put caps on it so I could seal it off and all of that. And fortunately the four 
I was going to do holes. You know, some people do a bunch of holes on the top, but I was afraid that if it rained, I wasn't going to be able to cook because water would come in. That's why I wanted the angles. And I went with four hoping it would be enough to maintain it. And that was a guess. And it was enough to maintain my temperature. I think if three would have been too little. And, well, you can never have too much because you always close them off. But that's where it came from. I didn't have a bunghole. So I had to come up with a way to exhaust. I also noticed that, Chef Johnny, you didn't, you didn't burn yours like Phil did previously. Um, is there any reason why? Um, mine, what, what we did was, was I uh, took, I think on that barrel, I got to remember which one. I think what I did was, was we wire brushed the inside out. So I, I didn't burn it out that way. I didn't ruin the paint on the outside. And it was, uh, that was a, uh, it didn't have a real heavy liner in it. So it wasn't too hard. So I just took a, a wire brush on the end of the drill and I cleaned that out and did it that way. See, see mine was a biodegradable paint. So I was like, hmm, I got to paint. I got to burn this thing out a couple of times because biodegradable does not mean not poisonous. You feel me? So yeah. <laughs> that's why I burned mine out. Nice. Now, now did you? In the process of, you know, getting the barrel, do you have to burn out every barrel? You know, because there's, you hear, you know, a regular barrel versus a food safe barrel. Is that if just If you a have something that, if you have a food safe barrel without a liner that had food in it, you know what I'm saying? Like a syrup uh, barrel or a fruit barrel, something like that, it ain't going to kill you. Wash it out real good. When you season it, you'll get your coating and you'll be all right. If you have a liner or questionable contents, burn the hell out of that thing. It'll save your uterus in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. So burn it anyways, probably. Yeah. If you're not sure, I'd recommend burning yeah, it. Especially sterilize. if you're going to paint it. If you're going to paint it anyways, burn that son of a gun. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because one, it's going to help. You don't have to do as, as much work if you burn all that off. Exactly. So it saves you a lot of work. And, uh, I would say the only thing is, is um, when you, and I've done this before too, is I've used my torch, you know, to do the outside, which is great. On the inside, a, a pear burner torch doesn't work as good because of the airflow inside of the barrel. And you, it's real hard. You go, you'll go through a lot of propane burning it off with a torch. Believe me, I know. I've done that. I did that on the red one. You know, and I was like, is this thing ever going to get? And, but um, uh, so the best thing to do is, is just build that fire in it and uh, get you a good hot one. It'll burn the inside out and leave you just a little bit of wire wheel on your drill work. Yep. And you'll, you'll have it out done. Now, with burning, along with that, the caveat, <clears throat> be careful of putting your lid. If you got your if your fire gets too hot, it warps your lid. You're screwed. You have to straighten <laughs> that thing out. Also, <laughs> drill your holes first, folks. Drill your holes. It will burn a lot better if you drill your holes. Then you got some air coming into the drum, and it keep your fire going a little bit hotter. Absolutely right. Ab yeah, yeah, totally right on, on that, Phil. Uh, and also, what you'll find out is is that uh, it's easier to mark when your barrel's painted. Yeah. So you can go ahead and mark all your holes, drill all your one. It makes it easier than that barrel that you just burned out that's got crap all over it, and you got to clean it before you touch it or you get all filthy, right? Yes. So do that first, drill your hose. It's going to keep you cleaner, and it's going to help with your burnout, just like Phil said. Nice, nice. And now, now Chef, um, on your exhaust, is that because the, the lid had the bunghole, so that was the, um, the exhaust you had to go for, or was that just a, a design on your own? It, dep it depends on, on which barrel you look at. Um, the red one had a screw on it, had the bunghole. So I was able to screw it in. The gray one, I'm trying to remember, and I, you know, after a while you build a few of them, but one of them had no bungholes. But I had a two inch hole saw. So what I did was, was I drilled a two inch hole in mine, and then I took a conduit coupler, electrical conduit coupler for two inch conduit. Mm. I put it through. Put that that nut there, those nuts, you know, they have the little kind of fingers on the edge and bind up for those electrical conduit uh, nuts. Tighten that up real good, and I stuck me about a 12-inch piece of uh, conduit in the top for an exhaust. And if you look at that gray one, also it's the insults I get from people on there is, is that 
hey, your intakes are too, they're taller than the barrel, they won't work. And I look at them, I go, but my stack is taller than them, it will work. <laughs> and, and the reason for that is, is I had two pieces of three foot long pipe when I built that one. So I could go down and pay someone to cut them off to 28 inches, or I could just make my stack taller. Well, I made my stack taller, and I've got a, about an 18 inch tall stack on there, so it's above my intake. No. Yours is bigger than mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, boys, we don't need to be measuring stacks here right now. <laughs> <laughs> we are here for fuckery, but we got to keep it family friendly. <laughs> but it was funny you say that, Chef, because we were actually having that conversation earlier today. He's like, you know, why is the exhaust so high? And we have, because on, on both drums, yours and Phil's, you have the ball valves on either side for the, for the flow. And... That was what I had thought that you were going to get a better airflow if the you know the exhaust stack was higher. Much in what I, what brought me um, my thought process on that was our, our brother Rick Galindo when he had put that taller stack on his offset and showed that with the how the fire flew flowed into the chamber with the stock stack and then with that taller one you could literally see the flames almost going sideways in towards the chamber because he was getting a much better flow yeah and that's probably just uh thermodynamic not that i'm a scientist but if you have a bigger piece of metal that's going to get hot heat rises it's going to be more efficient taking that heat out so you get a better intake, airflow, and then that heat's going to go out because you got a bigger piece of metal that's hot. Like I said, the heat rises. Now, um, you know, for, for anyone listening who doesn't know how a UDS runs, what's the science behind it of the charcoal basket? Uh, do you guys use a water pan on t above the charcoal basket? And then the two cooking grates, or one cooking grate, or can you go more if you want? You can, let's talk. To, <clears throat> let's talk how they work first. Okay, <clears throat> to have an ugly drum smoker, that is a sealed barrel. All right, just by virtue of what it is, it's a 55, 55 or thirty-five gallon uh, barrel. It's sealed. Now, you drill your holes at the bottom. That's for your intake. Your fire is also at the bottom in your firebox, regardless of using wood or using freaking uh, charcoal or whatever. So it's going to draw in heat. Once again, heat rises, and then it's going to come out of your exhaust. So you got air in, heated, it's going to take it up, and then you got your ambient heat because of the actual fire itself. I use a water pan sometimes. I always use a diffuser so that that fire directly underneath my meat is not directly radiant. There's something to offset. There's something to diffuse that fire from going straight up. I have a diffuser with holes in it because those beautiful juices in that fat, I still want to be able to pass through back down into my fire. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you still get that aroma. You still get that steam, a little bit of a moist environment. Now, water can, uh, water pan kind of depends on what i'm cooking or what i'm trying to do you know can i do some beef ribs without a water pan are they better with you know that's just the fun of cooking you know for me uh, i'm not a professional chef i'm not selling food chef johnny probably has a perfected way of doing it i like to experiment i mean hell i built a smoker out of a barrel and i never did it before i like to experiment <laughs> experiment with some stuff but that's how it works Okay, it's sealed, and you can control how much air is going in, and you can control how much exhaust is going out, so you can maintain your heat, and it's set it and forget it. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chef John. No, you're absolutely right. The more air it gets, the hotter it's going to get. The less air, the you, you turn the temperature down. Yeah. Now, I've also noticed that one of you, um, I think, Phil, you have an ash catcher. Johnny, you did not. Is there just a preference, or is one... You prefer one or the other? No, I did. Just when I made that basket, we took some uh, expanded metal, rolled it up, put a bottom on it, and I just turned my uh, my drum upside down and shake it out and get everything out of it. The new one, the red one, uh, it does. I of course UDS parts the their basket 
has a ash catcher in it, which makes it easier to clean up everything out of there. And I just bought one of their uh, baskets for the gray one because that that basket was in its second drum, and it was finally uh, given up the ghost. It, it burnt through the bottom, and so I just bought a new uh, basket just for that drum uh, just a while back. So it's got a brand-new basket with an ash catcher in it. And I, I tell you what I see a guy do is, and I, and I, and I thought, man, that's a cool idea. I think I'm going to start doing it is. He takes unscented cat litter and spreads it around the bottom of his uh, UDS so that when all that grease and stuff hits the bottom, all he's got to do is scoop that cat litter up and take it out and keep it clean. That's, That's a, a good idea. idea. That is yeah. brilliant. I would have never thought of that. I, mean, I got to get over the cat litter part, <laughs> but that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing, and my thing too is uh, he has a, man, I wish I could remember his name. He's got a small channel, not a lot of videos, but he's the Johnny only Max. guy right now on, on YouTube that has a Bronco Pro, the big Bronco from Oklahoma Joe's. Yeah. He's the only one I know that has the Pro, the big 55-gallon size one. Wow. And he's the one that uses that. And I tell you, if anybody knows Oklahoma Joe out there, tell them to freaking call me. I've been sending them an email a week for about a year now saying, hey, come talk to me. I want to talk to you all about one of your drum smokers and featuring it on my channel. And them bums ain't even sent me a letter back to say, hey, quit bothering us. <laughs> I thought if I did it long enough, I'd annoy them and at least get a, hey, kiss our rears, leave us alone. Now, now, about, I've not yet got a response back. Yeah. The, now, the ash catcher on my first, well, I built the the uh, fire, I guess you call it the, the, the uh, Come on, help me out, guys. The coal box? Yeah, fire, yeah, fire, fire basket. I don't know why I couldn't say basket. Stop. <laughs> anyway, the fire basket for my uh, UDS, the original one, I built that first. Okay. Yes. And once again, trying to figure out how I use expanded metal. I use some U-joints and some nuts and some bolts and uh, one of those cheap old barbecue grills. Yeah, it was, it was, a, ga it was a gas station charcoal grill. Yeah, with the legs exactly. cut off. Yeah, and, yeah. And when I originally made the, the basket, there was no ash catcher, but I had extra parts left. I was like, well, if you look at the, if you look at the actual UDS video, it says, hey, guys, there's an ash catcher on here now. The original video, I didn't. And I just had that pan. I was like, aha, it's a good idea. So it was just luck of the draw, man. I had extra nuts and bolts and time. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, yeah. um, Charlie from Pickles Barbecue, he's got a good question. Do you, have you ever guys run splits in your UDSs or just charcoal with chunks? I've never used splits, not in the UDS. No, I think you get I think you get bad smoke. You get a too big of a piece of wood in a UDS, you get bad smoke out. Yeah, I agree with that. You get smoldering. You know, yeah. so I what I put now, you will see me in a couple of videos back. Uh I did some brisket and I did some, I wouldn't call them a split, but, um, you know, it was about a quarter of mesquite and I went in and split it. So they're only this thick, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're three quarters of an inch thick. Maybe they are long. So some people might think they're a split, but they're really not a split. They're just a long three quarter inch there, but they're not like a, you know, when you think a split, what it really yeah. would be. You mean actual so, sticks. Yeah, yeah, they're just, I just took an, a log and split it up, but they're they're small, so they're not going to, what happens is when you have a big piece of wood in there, you get smoldering. Yeah. And smoldering is bad. You, you want your wood to burn when it gets in there, so not chips, you won't, you won't, uh, you know, you won't chunks, but just not too big or you can get a bad smoke. So yeah. you would almost go with like a split then... Um Almost like with, with like a small hand hatchet, break it in like you were making um, making kindling. Yeah, like yeah. that. Maybe type a little bigger size. than that, but right. Yeah. yeah. When right. I use chunks, I use a chunk as big as my fist or smaller, and then I'm only using like one or two of them. You got to make sure your wood's small enough to burn, like Chef Johnny said. If you get a big chunk of wood in there and it just smolders, you're gonna get a shitload of bad taste and smoke. Now, how much charcoal do you use in the basket? Because I noticed on, you know, like obviously like a Weber Smoky Mountain type, you know, they have that door where you could add some more. 
there's no door on the drum unless you put one in. So do you, you know, do you start with a certain amount of, you know, raw charcoal, then throw a lit chimney on top and let the, uh, you know, the gravity do its thing? What I do, <clears throat> I fill it up halfway, throw in two or three chunks of wood, and I fill up the rest away and throw in two or three chunks of wood and let it go. Because even if my cook gets done early, you can turn it off. You can't yeah. do that in a Weber kettle. You can't do that in most other smokers. But a UDS, once I'm done cooking, seal it up, fire goes out, shake out the ashes, and start again. Keep going. Yep, yep, yep. absolutely right. Uh, I fill my basket up, and I tell yeah. you what, um, you would have to cook a long time because that the basket on that on that red one. Now the new one I just got in is a little bit smaller. It's about eleven and a half inches, but the the one on the red one is 12 by 12 by 12. Wow. If you fill that up with charcoal and you can't cook a, a brisket with that much charcoal, then just quit and give it up and you know knit for a living because yeah. you don't need to cook any longer than that. Yeah. I've done, on the nuts, I've done 14-hour smokes without refueling. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite thing to cook in the UDS? Never mind. I was going to say food. <laughs> you like smart <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Favorite thing to do on a UDS, I'll say pork butts because there's no work in a pork butt. You know, one, you got to be, you have to try to screw up a pork butt on a UDS. I'm talking about a lot of effort. They're very forgiving. It's a longer cook, not as long as a brisket, but you got a fire that's properly dialed in. You throw in a pork butt. Look, you could wrap it if you feel like it, or you could just dial down the temperature and let it go. So I'll go with pork butts. Mm, I, I say all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything I'd say. Oh, I just really like cooking that in there. Uh, like I, said, I do like cooking chicken over an open fire. So you know, and of course, you know, my pit makers are are big. So if I've got two chickens, it don't make a whole lot of sense for me to fire up that pit maker, mm. right? In one of those two, you know, and get it going. Uh, so I do a lot of chicken in those. Uh, I also have that, you know, that other barrel cooker, my uh, barrel house cooker, which I, I, I love barrel cookers. I mean, hey, whether it's a barrel house, a pit barrel, an ugly drum, barrel smokers are, they are just great. But uh, I, there's nothing I don't like cooked on them, but I, I do like chicken over fire. Nice. And so, uh, so our turkey, you spatch cock a turkey, lay mm. that, it'll lay, if it's not too big, you know, it'll lay down flat on that grate. Man, cook about 325, and you can cook a turkey in two and a half hours, big turkey in there. <laughs> yeah. And it's great. You'll quit, I tell you, you'll quit frying turkeys if you ever cook one like that. See, I've never done a turkey. See, now I'm going to do it. I have to do it. <laughs> yeah. But what I love about them, and I don't even know if this is going to be a question, what I love about them is, you said that th you can leave the house, man. You can leave, take care of something. Not all day now. You know, don't be an idiot. But you can go run to the store or do something real quick and come back, and it, your cook's going to be fine. Try that with an offset. <laughs> yeah. No, you got to be there every hour to throw a stick on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got that big reverse flow, and it's a great cooking offset smoker. But every hour, you better be there to throw a split yeah. on it. Yep. Yeah. You no, know, you just that's something you gotta do. And and you know, with the uh with the UDSs, John and I, either one of my son, you know, if we're cooking something on there, heck, we go in and go to bed. <laughs> we might we might set the set it for two or three hours and get up and, and go check it, or I'll use my ink bird. You know, if I'm in the bunkhouse, say I've got I've got so I've been times where I've had both of them going out there, right? Cooking something in there and didn't want to fire up the pit makers. I got two briskets or something and I'll go sleep in the bunkhouse and I'll be in my chair and kind of look up and look at the temps with my ink bird and then go back to sleep. I don't even have to get out of my chair, man. <laughs> you know, cause it's up still cruising. I go back yeah. to sleep, you know, yeah. dial them in there. You know, it, it, it takes a while to figure out how to dial them in. Uh, I will admit this, the kit cooks better than the one I made mm. as far as getting it accurate. And that's just cause there was somebody developed those kits that knew what they were doing and understood them a lot better than I did on all of mine. But those made like mine and made like Phil, ours are really very similar. Let me tell you what, they ain't bad. 
they there and no. for you know and for 125 150 bucks you you find me a pit that will cook like they do for 150 dollars yeah you got competition cooks that use uds's Oh yeah, there's guys and, in and Kansas win. City Royal. That's all. Yeah, that's all they cook. Harry Sue. Now Harry Sue uses Weber Smoky Mountains, mm -hmm. but I mean it's that same concept. And Harry, how many cookouts does Harry <laughs> Sue want on basically a drum smoker? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, uh, brother Bill, Bill Purvis from Chicken Fried Barbecue. Yeah. He's he's been on a tear the past two years, or you know, two seasons on the mm -hmm. you know the IBCA in tech. Texas circuit, Texas, yep. and then the past two weeks, you know, he's pl placed, I know he placed uh, 21st this Sunday, and I think it was maybe mid to high teens the week before mm. in KCBS, In you know, those were the first two KCBS mm. sanctioned events he's ever cooked in, and, wow. you know, he's in, yeah. in you know, uh, top you know, 20. Bill, cook. You know, Bill came down last summer, and we cooked the cook-off together. Uh, he was kind of just getting into cook-offs, and I hadn't done it in a while. And so he said, hey, let's get together and do a cook. And so that weekend that we were having the get-together in my house, Bill came up on Friday, and we did a uh, cook-off on Saturday. And then all the guys showed up. You know, and James was there from Amo McClain on T-Roy. You know, Rick Delendo was his first time. I brought Rick in. He was mesmerized by all the greatness around him, you know. But uh, Bill and I went to that cook-off, and so we've got his ugly drum, we got my old gray drum, and my barrel house cooker, and that's what we're cooking in, all right? Mm -hmm. so people are kind of walking by with their noses up, looking at our stupid little <laughs> barrel smokers there, you know? <laughs> and uh, there's guys, I mean, with some high-dollar rigs. I mean, some high-dollar. There was some couple of pit maker rigs there that were real nice, some that guys had made, and they're kind of giving us that look, you know, and so... You know, when everything started that day, and, and uh, we wound up with a, uh, a sixth-place brisket, fourth-place <laughs> chicken, and first-place ribs. Well, afterwards, guess how many people wanted to know something about them ugly-ass <laughs> barrels we were cooking on? All of them. Uh, they were all like, well, you know, how much money you got in yours? We're like, oh, about $250 all in all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Barrel House gave me that one, you know, and that's a $250 cooker at that time, and, you, being Bill, so that one was free, and being Bill on the other two had about a hundred dollars, hundred twenty-five, and each you, one. You had more money in proteins on the barrel cookers <laughs> than you had in in material. Yeah, well, you know, hey, Bill brought down a wagyu brisket, and I brought in some good ribs, and uh, and I think I don't know, I think my cousin Fernando brought in the chickens or something. So we all kind of split up the meat cost, <laughs> and uh, we we ended up third place overall. But I tell you, this is cook-offs in general. Yeah. And they gave us our score sheets back. In chicken, we had fourth place in chicken. The lowest score we had in chicken was an eight, except for one judge. Wow. One judge gave us fives across the board. And the lowest score we had in appearance was a nine. We had nines and tens in appearance from every other judge. That guy gave us a five in appearance. It makes you wonder what this guy was looking at. Right. <laughs> if he would have gave us right. one point lower than the lowest score we had, a seven. If he would have gave us just sevens instead of fives, we would have been first place chicken and won the overall cook-off. Wow. One judge. Against people driving up with big old smokers and shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Towing in their That's machines. Right. <laughs> That's right. Me and Bill and from my cousin Fernando. Fernando's been on my cookoff team forever. Nice. And, uh, yeah. That's what. That's what happened. Now, how did you guys come up? Where did you guys find the specs for these for the for your first one, your first ugly drum smoker? I I was gonna show you, but I'm gonna turn around and say I pulled it out my ass, but that would have been inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had no specs. I looked at a lot of YouTube videos. I looked at a uh, like did a lot of googling. Because I didn't know what an ugly drum smoker was when I went into this endeavor. And based on what I saw without blueprints, but, you know, I could kind of see the trend. Most of them kind of did the same thing. Um, the only thing I think that was really different was my exhaust because of the lack of bunghole, as we said earlier. And the longer intakes because I was too lazy to bend over. They're not necessary. You can put your ball valves at the bottom or you can just use magnets. You don't even need ball valves. I just thought 
if I'm going to make it. And I would start thinking about the color scheme and the, you know, the Ranger tab and the black and gold. And I just figured it would look sexy. That's why I did it that way. And I didn't have to bend over to adjust my intake. But I'm all I about no not bending over. I just so. pulled it out of my butt and I was, <laughs> you know, I was more lucky than skilled, I'll say. <laughs> you know, like, like like Phil is, I didn't want to bend over. I was still fat back then. So, you know, I wasn't wanting to bend. I might tip over when I got out that low to, to adjust it if it was down on the ground. But uh, uh, I had seen some and I'd seen some at cook offs. And the guys, literally, what they did is, is they had drilled a ho- four holes. They had four holes in there, like most of them do with the three quarter inch hole. That's about what you need. Uh, you might get away with three, but four works pretty good. And uh, all they had covering their holes were, were uh, cover plates off of a four by four electrical box. It's like you, you know those handy boxes that electricians use. They had taken a four by four solid cover, bolted it on above their hole, and bent the edge up where they could move it. Yeah. And that was that was how they controlled their air. Was that they didn't even have uh, they didn't even have nipples or anything on them. It was just the holes covered up by those electrical plates. And I thought, well, you know, I could put some nipples in there and go change this and change that. And so I altered it a little bit. And that's how I came up with mine. Because mine, I built my first one even before I was even watching YouTube. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Hey there, Uncle Steve. <clears throat> I got your video coming on Friday. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> it's going to be supposed to be a surprise. But, uh, but yeah, we, uh you got anything? We got a couple. Got a couple minutes. No, I mean, well, I mean, how many, Chef Johnny? How many have you made total? Do you know? Oh, I'd say ten or twelve, probably something like that. Majority of them are the are like my gray one. You know, the uh, the vast majority. I've made two with uh, with parts. Um, so uh, you know, from udsparts.com. So the first eight or ten were all three quarter inch pipe, uh, like that. But yeah, so I ten or twelve. I'd have to sit down and go through it, but somewhere in that neighborhood. Wow! And then Phil, how many have you made? Uh, I made one, but I've planned three. And you know, I wrote down a little bit, got stuff in my head. And I just never got around to building, you know, filming three more. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna make another one. I like the one that I have. So if I do, I'm just gonna refurb it, and I'm just gonna keep the nuts, man. I'm I'm not in the UDS business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing cook-offs again, so that's why uh, I probably will build one more. I've already got the drum. I just need to just need to do it. But going to a cook-off, you know, then you've got three pits going, and you know, have to work. Plus, my high school kids, we started a high school barbecue team here, and I bought the material to build four. So we're, I'm, my, my classroom nice. is in the same building as the ag shops. And so, uh, and of course, we share kids. So my kids are going to take them all. I'm going to show them how to build them. So the high school kids will build four this year whenever we get them back at school. And that's be what they cook on at the cook-offs for the high school competitions. I feel like uh, that would be a sport I could let her in in high school. Absolutely. See, um, that should be an Olympic freaking <laughs> sport. Bump that, what do you call that shit that they do uh, with the big old ball? Uh, curling. Oh, curling. Oh, curling. <laughs> brisket cooking, man. Yeah, and then think of the excuse, you know, you're out at the pit, you're having a few cocktails, and your wife just yells at you, hey, all you're going to just sit there and drink all day? Hey, I'm training for the Olympics. I'm training for the Olympics. I am a <laughs> finely <laughs> tuned <laughs> athlete. I'm trying to get my sponsors. <laughs> um, uh, Uncle Steve asks, I-, I need to get a custom painted UDS for my cooking team. Who makes Who makes them? Or is that just finding a local... You know, uh, yeah, probably. Pinstripe probably of paint. Local. Uh, he's over in Houston. I'd go. I'd go. Uh, Steve, uh, the guy that has Ugly Jump Smokers, Texas. Steve Powell. He could do it. Uh, Raceway Drums, the ones that that uh, uh, that uh, uh, Chicken Fried Bill Purvis uses. Those are those are uh, uh, that guy. He he powder coats them, and man, those are sweet. Bills are powder coated. He's got two Raceways. So you've got some people out there that do that, but Uncle Steve's in Houston, so I, I'd holler in Ugly Drum Smokers, Texas, and see what somebody will do for him. Okay. All right, boys. We're running out of time, so I'm going to throw one last question out from Jason. Uh, Chef, what kit would you recommend from UDS Parts? Well, you know, 
I think it's all about your budget, but but my deal is, is this. Uh, I would get one that includes the the fire basket, a grate, and the intakes and the exhaust, whatever that base kit is. Uh, get those things. You don't have to have the laser cut, uh, you know, like in the ultimate kit, you know. And, of course, and I, and I'll do it. They gave me the ultimate kit, right, to do a video for them. I bought the one to make for my kids. But uh, their base kit, you know, you want that the, the intakes for the bottom. You want the uh, the grate, and the grate can be just a regular Weber kettle grate, right? You don't need that laser cut one like you get with the ultimate kit. So, I mean, all you need is a base one, and it's it's the base kit, not that much money. Go ahead, Phil. And like you said earlier, Chef Johnny, something to get it off the ground, some wheels or some legs, something to get it off the ground so you, it doesn't rust out just sitting on the ground. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking time to join us. This was a great conversation, very informative, and I can't wait. I, I, I'm b building one as soon, as soon as I get the funds <laughs> back. I'm, 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 I'm going to be elbows deep in the garage in a, in a drum. And permission. Don't forget about permission. It's easier to ask forgiveness than it is permission. <laughs> in some know. cases. So, boys, where can everybody find you each on social media? Uh, you can find me my cooking channel on YouTube is Daddy Cooks. I do have a podcast called R Bop. You can find that also on uh, YouTube and anywhere pop podcasts are found. But it's not about food; it's about people. And my Instagram is Daddy underscore Cooks underscore YT, all lowercase. And you got me, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, uh, of course, Instagram, Texas Style Cuisine, YouTube, te Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. Uh, anything on Facebook that's Texas Style Cuisine uh, slash Chef Johnny's my page. But my YouTube group, I mean, my Facebook group is the Big Sexy Barbecue Society. So, <laughs> y'all need to get on that group, man. It's, it's, we got some great members. We're over about 3,300, 3,400 members now. And getting some great food and some great content put in the Big Sexy. So, y'all y'all need to join in on that, whether you're big and sexy or not. Hey, y'all need to jump on that quick before Chef Johnny has to leave his own group because he's losing a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. I love the both of you with all my heart. Thank you so much for taking some time out to, uh, to come my and pleasure. play today. Chris, you made it? I did. I made it. Thank you guys for letting me join in on your conversation. Thanks for including me. All right. Well, that's it for this week, folks. We'd like to thank you all for joining us. Catch the audio wherever podcasts are found. Catch the video on Facebook and YouTube. On YouTube, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. You'll have all our episodes right there at your fingertips. On social media, find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Pit Life BBQ. And also YouTube, Johnny Mag's Barbecue. Uh, Find us also, New England Pit Masters, the Barbecue Broker, and obviously find us here every Tuesday. <laughs> uh, questions and comments, please send them to pitlifebbqpodcast at gmail.com. And like always, subscribe, like, rate, and review. Hit that share button. Okay, can't thank you all enough. And, uh, well, that's it. So, till next week, keep the smoke rolling. Attention cigar smokers, or even friends of a cigar smoker. If you're looking to relax with a nice premium cigar or looking for a great gift for a cigar smoker, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Our friends at TwoGuysCigars.com have created the Cigar of the Month Club. For just $24.99 per month, you or your friend will receive four different premium handmade cigars every month. And shipping and handling is included. Go to TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and go to the Cigar of the Month Club. You can stop anytime because there's no contract, but you won't because this is a tremendous deal for our listeners. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and click the Cigar of the Month Club. At the same time, if you want to learn about the cigars you receive each month, you can smoke along with them on their own podcast called The Cigar Authority. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a nice premium cigar from our friends at TwoGuysCigars.com. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.